Hey guys, it's Brian, and I've seen a lot of people on like Facebook uh, groups where they're talking about live sonar and they're talking about people putting YouTube videos up and not explaining how they're using active target. They're just showing active target or live so front facing sonar and catching fish, but they're not explaining anything. Well, I posted a video recently, uh, had a good day, but I'll put it up in the eye, go watch it. So now I'm gonna to try to take some of the, the active target recording footage and put it up and like explain to you what I'm seeing. So hopefully it'll help you. Now, with that said, there is no replacement for time on the water. There's no replacement for getting out and using your actual tools. And I'm talking about electronics, I'm talking about lures, anything. Use the tools to figure out how it works for you. But I'm gonna explain what I'm seeing and hopefully it'll help you get better and you know be able to use your tools better. So with that said, let's go. Alright guys, so like I said, uh, I want to you know, share with you guys kind of what I've learned um, and by no means am I a master at the active target. I'm just slowly getting better and I think that's what everybody needs to be doing. Slowly getting better, you know, you're going to take it one step at a time. So let's start out by you know, kind of breaking down what I'm doing. <clears throat> so I'm coming off the pad, I know there's a little shelf point know stick out the uh, sticks out and it creates a eddy uh, behind it and I know that there's usually fish there so what I'm gonna do is come off pad I turn on my side imaging and down imaging and I do some scanning uh, and I'm looking for fish uh, I want to find the fish before I even you know go there and look, try to look at them on my active target because there's no point of you know, fishing if there's no fish there We've got these electronics, and that's pretty much the way I've tried to approach it lately. Is if I don't see fish, I'm not fishing. So what I do is, you know, mark the place. I'm turning around. I'm going to ease up there, and I'm not going to go like come all the way up there on my motor, um, on the big motor. I'm going to get up there a certain distance, and then I'm going to jump up and use my trailer motor to get me in a better you know, in position. Uh, and that's where active target is actually going to come in. Um, it's going to get me where I can be within, you know, a cast of these fish. Um, I, I kind of like to keep the fish within, you know, the, within like uh, three quarters of a cast. You know, I don't want them too far out. Um, so here we go, we're gonna drop down, we're gonna uh, <clears throat> throw my drop shot. That's another tip guys, I've learned kind of like using my finesse techniques have helped me get better with active target, whether it be a drop shot, a finesse swim bait, like a three inch swim bait on a small jig head. You know, those have helped me out a lot. So here we go. You can see there's some fish out there. And I'm gonna break down this footage actually a little bit better after the fish catch. There we go, I've got one hooked up. I'm gonna get him coming. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to see the fish on active target, kind of swimming around below the, below the transducer. And I can. This what's helping me here is seeing the size of what this fish looks like on my active hunt. So the size of the fish. Help us. 
All right, guys. So here's the footage that was up in the corner of uh, the screen on the fish catch. So right here, you're going to see the fish up under the tra uh, transducer as I'm fighting it. This is helping me see the fish, see what the size of the fish is. So when I pull it in, and it was a small fish, like it was probably a pound there. So now I know what the size of the fish is. Um, so we're fixing to throw the fish back in. I want you to notice that when you go in, you can see the disruption of the water as the fish goes in the water. And he kind of makes his way on down. It's not as clear because he wasn't in the cone as good. So now, uh, I also want to point out that I have added range of 80 foot and a depth of 40 foot. Uh, that's where I was kind of keeping it this day. Uh, you're going to see right here, you're going to see all the fish the school of fish that I've been uh, fishing for. I mean, it's a pretty good school, and you can see the size of fish. There's some pretty good fish in this school. I just couldn't get them to buy it. Uh, I want to say I caught some more, uh, like one pounders out of them, but never could get the quality fish to buy, it, even though we're seeing those fish here. Again, guys, this is just some footage. I thought it was kind of interesting seeing all the fish. It's around a brush pile, but seeing all the fish kind of swim around like they do. If you go to um, Bass Pro or Cabela's and look at the, the aquarium, my, my daughter loves it, so we always go to the aquarium. But just seeing how the fish just kind of swim around. They're not sitting still for the most part. They're always moving. It's, it's kind of made me think you know, about stuff now. All right, so in this little clip, um, it's a brush pile guy, and you can see the fish kind of moving around in the brush pile, some better fish as well. And then you can actually see the fish moving in the brush pile itself, um, and they're not some bad fish. I'm not saying I'm, they're bass or anything, but you can see the fish move around through the brush pile. I just thought it was a cool clip, and that's why I included it. All right, guys, in this next video, um, you can actually see my drop shot go down, but what was detrimental, and it's, it's boat position. Um, I'm, I'm moving too close and too fast over the fish itself. So you're gonna see my drop shot drop down right here. So you're looking at a 40 foot cast. Here's uh, my drop shot going down, but I'm moving to the fish. And as I'm reeling up, I just, I, I wish I would have been sitting still because you can see the fish following my bait as it goes back up uh, here in just a second. Alright okay, guys, so this is uh, some fish over top of a, drop, uh, of a brush pile. You can see my bait kind of drop down um, into the brush pile and a bunch of fish come around it. I actually get bit and the fish comes off. Uh, small fish. I'm, Probably just a, either a, a small white bass or a small spotted bass. Uh, that's a, a look at a big school of uh, fish of some good fish too. I mean, and it was a very big school of fish. Uh, there were probably a hundred fish in that school. Don't know if they were bass. It could have been a bunch of stripe, but they had some good sized fish in it. You can see them swimming and I just, Sometimes, I think this, the longer one up at the top is not, uh, I want to say it's probably a gar or something, but it's just seeing the different bait. And there's my drop shot again. So, it, I just love looking at this stuff. In this last video, guys, uh, I was fishing a spot that I knew that had some rock piles in it and then I saw something weird and I went to look uh, go down in the comments and tell me what you think it is uh, I, I have reported this to the authorities uh, they will be going and retrieving it when the water warms up but you never know what you're going to find uh, one of the great things about doing some recordings is seeing what you you know seeing some of the stuff you find so. All right, guys. So now that we've you know got through the footage, and I just want to say like, do some screen recordings. You'd be surprised at what you see when you're not like out there, and everything's happening. Like I personally can't stare at that screen the whole time. I like to, before I make a cast, look to see where the fish are. You know, 
well, that last video, like I would look down and see, okay, those fish are 40 foot out this side of the boat or 40 foot behind the boat. And I would look, I'd make that cast, and then I'm, I quit looking at my screen because I want to, you know, I'm paying all my attention. Everything is in, the, in my cast, in that, waiting for that feel. I give it to the guys who can stand there and watch the screen the whole time. I can't do it. So doing the screening recordings is great for me because I can look at stuff that I missed later. And I can also know where those areas are and I can go find that stuff later. Um, so always, like if you don't record, you need to be recording. And that means recording your, you know, your, your forward facing sonar. That means recording your side scan and down scan. Like you'd be surprised at like times where you could be on the water and you're looking at ledges, record that stuff. And then later you can go back and you like watch it and look through it and be like, okay, so, oh look, I missed something over here. And you can actually like pinpoint that stuff and it'll save the waypoint on your on your units and you can go back and fish it later. But like I said, always do recording because it will help you out. I, I found that it helps me out. It helps me see stuff. Heck, even doing these videos, I see stuff to fix with hook sets and casts and the way I, you know, the way I do things on the water. So always be recording. Uh, I think that's uh, YOLO tech, always be recording. It's just, it helps you out. It's watching game film. That's the way I look at it. We used to play sports. If you used to play sports, you always watch game film. So here's, this is game film. Um, so always be recording, guys. I will make a note, one note. Um, if you're using Active Target, because Lowrance doesn't save the range and depth yet in the data that when you do the recording, uh, take a note of it. Take a snapshot with your phone. Do something. That way you've got it when you're looking at it later. Like, <clears throat> That, that's what I do. I, I take a little snapshot of my phone when I'm recording. I try to only record in like five minute bursts, I guess you'd call it like five minute sections. I found like one time I recorded like 30 minutes and my computer did not like that file whatsoever. So I try to keep it a small file, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes max so I can go back and watch it later. So guys, if you like the footage, you know, Go down and give me a like, you know, tell me what, you know, if you'd like to see something different, uh, I would not mind to try to help you guys out. I, I'm actually coming up with a thought in my head how to use the active target footage and fish catches and how to kind of capture both of them at the same time. So I have, have it to put together to better explain what I'm seeing and what I'm catching. Because not only does it help you guys, it helps me. Like I said, game footage. It helps me out. So... Uh, go down and leave a like, you know, leave a comment, tell me what you like, or if you got questions, I'll gladly answer them. And hey, let's just go ahead and do the YouTube thing. If you haven't already, go hit the subscribe button, hit ding the bell, leave the like, leave a comment. Much appreciated with me, helps me out. So uh, with all that said, guys, wholeheartedly, thank you for watching the video. And, you know, we're going to we're gonna get this AT figured out. Uh, I hope to help myself figure it out and you guys figure it out. So, you know, let's just work on it. Until next time, stay safe, tight lines, and we'll see you on the water.